Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. You know, if you're in this trade long enough, sooner or later you're going to get a part, a print, drawing, sketch, whatever from somebody, and you're going to look at it and you're going to go, I don't think so, and you're going to give it back to them. Trust me, it will happen if it hasn't already happened. And I'm talking about extremely small diameters over an extremely long distance or an incredibly thin wall uh, job of any type, material, length, it really doesn't matter. What I'm going to show you today, I'm going to show you a trick that's more, it's not a really a trick, but it's a philosophy that can be applied to a variety of different uh, scenarios. And if you get your head around what I'm about to show you, it can be very helpful. So let me show you what I'm going to make out of the shot. First thing I'm going to show you. I'm going to really draw this out of scale for dramatic effect so you get a feel for which way we're going today. We're going to make a part. This is the cross section of the part. Let's just go all the way. It's a round part. It's got a bore. And let's see the ID. I'm going to be very specific about this. 1.163 ID. OD. What's a good OD for that? How about 1.183. There you go. Now a lot of you just cringed and fell off your chair, but check this out. And the length, how about two inches? Now you get a print or a drawing that looks like that and you would go, yeah, that's no big deal. There's a lot of meat there, right? Well, if you do the math, we're talking about a 10 thou wall over two inches. Now is it possible? It is absolutely possible. But there's a technique that allows you to do this. It doesn't matter if it's stainless, plastic, wood, well maybe not wood, but stainless, plastic, aluminum, whatever. The philosophy is the same. So let's take a walk out to the lathe. I'm going to set this one up in black Celcon, which is plastic. I'm going to cheat and use an easy material. But I'm going to put this to the test. 1 inch 163 diameter ID and a 10 thou wall for 2 inches and it's going to be dead on when I'm done. Let's take a walk. Okay, the secret to successfully turning that part that I just drew on the board is to not creep up on it. Take as much material as you can based on the rigidity of your machine, the material, the type of tool that you're using, and just have at it. Just slam the ID in, slam the OD in, and the distortion should be absolutely minimized, 100%. Now, if you're using a softer material like this Delrin, Teflon, uh, high-density poly, when you put your pilot hole in, try not to drill the pilot hole deeper than the face of your jaws. If you remove the internal support material of the stock that you're holding, the jaw pressure will distort that particular blank and that will translate to your final geometry of your part. So let's fire this thing up, take a couple of test cuts, establish where our tools are going to be and make this part happen. I'm going to take a look for the 1 inch 183 diameter first. High speed steel tooling, 770 RPM. One inch two sixty five, two hundred ninety, four eighty.
Now ideally when you cut an extremely thin wall bushing like this, bore the IED to the finished size and take the majority of the material off the outside. When the wall thickness is incredibly thin, the buildup of the chips on the inside with the boring bar have better tendency to explode the part. So bore it when the outside is nice and thick. I'm taking a Sharpie marker and I am marking my cross slide to the apron with the number that I'm going to need to put that finished touch on there. Well, let's drill it out, bore it, see what we get. The wall thickness of your material is still sufficiently thick as to avoid distortion or push from the tool, it's okay to take a second pass. The majority of this technique is going to work on the OD. go for the two inch length. Alright, now the OD is going to be done in one shot. That way the bushing has the support from the main body of the material that's currently there. I'm going to set the speed, the feed, a little bit slower so I can get a better finish and control the chip. Bear with me. Sure, I get my two inch length out of there, which I can easily. If you have to deburr the ID, now would be a good time to do that.
one inch 181 on the outside, one inch 163 on the inside. Now ideally this should be done with a tube mic, but for this application this is fine. We have an 11 thousandths wall, and I think you can see that there is nothing there that is very thin. I am going to slip the machine out of gear and I'm going to part this off by hand. Any excessive RPM with a part this small is just going to wrap around the parting tool and you're going to have nothing but a big nasty what used to be your part hanging on to the tool. My tool has got an extremely aggressive angle this way so I'm cutting with the very point of the tool. I'm going to zero out my digital at this point, move it into two inches, and spin this by hand. Let's put the drill back in there to catch the part. I'm also feeding it by hand. You can hear it start to crunch as it breaks through. That's when you have to be real careful not to ruin the part. Here's the crunch. There's the part. Eleven thousandths thick wall, two inches long. Piece of cake. Okay, guys, let's get a closer look at this part. You can see the inside is absolutely beautiful. The outside is very smooth as well. If you put a slight radius on your tools, you will get a much better finish in plastic. But the tools that I used were relatively sharp, about a 5 thou radius on the nose. And it worked like a charm. This is not something that you want to do in more than one pass because when you try to do any type of work to this, the tool pressure, everything in general is just not going to be very favorable. So try this. It works in stainless, it works in aluminum, it works in plastic, and it's quite a neat technique. And when you do this, when you do a thin wall tube like this, make sure you do the outside as your second pass and keep the chips, keep the spaghetti, swarf, whatever you call it, keep it away from the part. If it gets between the cutting tool and the part, it will blow the part up. That's all I got. Hope you like it. Okay, well I hope that you got something out of that. That is a great technique for making exceptionally thin wall parts on a lathe. Make sure that you do the inside first, keep the chips away from the tool when you're doing the outside, have all your numbers everything should work well for you. Naturally, the philosophy behind that is what I wanted to show you, not necessarily the starting size or the depth of cut. It all varies depending on the material, the rigidity of your machine, the type of tools that you use. But to see it done once, you can say, hey, okay, one shot will do it, and one shot will do it. So try it out. I hope you like what you, uh, the results that you get, because my results are usually favorable, but I've been doing it a while. so. Check it out. Try it. One shot. See how thin you can get just for fun. Anyway, the same philosophy applies to turning exceptionally small diameters. And if you're watching this video pretty soon now, if not already, I will post a video on how to do exceptionally small diameters extending out very far. So until then, Joe Pizinski, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.